welcome to Perth City Talks. I'm Miles Riley and as part of NAIDOC Week we are here at Curtin University for the launch of Consumer Protection's new Indigenous Community Education Program. This week's NAIDOC is the annual celebration to talk about um, changes in the Indigenous community. For us it's an opportunity to get out and talk to people and also to hear from community members about what's going on. The day today we're talking about our new campaign, the Ask Us campaign, looking at how we can help community members if they have problems with the things they buy, with their with tenancy, with renting a home, um, buying a car. Um, with their mobile phones or any of the things that they're purchasing and making sure that those transactions are fair and that they get a good deal out of them and helping them if they're, if they're not. What we've been about is trying to use some of the uh, publicity of NAIDOC Week to actually make a better connection into the Indigenous community. We've got a uh, promotion which is going now about consumers' rights, especially when we're dealing with door-to-door -door salespeople we find that there's a lot of sales done into remote communities which are putting consumers at disadvantage and we find that those communities don't connect very well with consumer protection. So this is about launching a, a song and, an, and a series of advertisements to get to that community so that they then know to connect with us where they find that they've got problems where they might have engaged with someone and breached their door-to-door -door trading rights. So NAIDOC Week has been a fantastic opportunity for us to engage with the Indigenous community to get this message across. The ACCC is a, is a national agency, it's a national independent statutory authority. It looks after the provisions of the Competition and Consumer Act, it used to be the Trade Practices Act. So the Trade Practices Act has got provisions relating to business to business conduct and these are things like cartel conduct, misuse of market power and it also has significant uh, laws regarding consumer protection. So what we do is we look after consumer protection and the way people are uh, protected from unscrupulous traders and we also look after business conduct and we do that on a national basis. So we work hand in hand with the state regulators. Um, so we hopefully we're pretty effective in what we do. A lot of what we do is in education. Um, but where traders don't take the hint and follow the law, then we can take court action and uh, impose quite significant penalties. Can you tell us more about the issues, the, the consumer protection issues that Indigenous communities are faced with? What we find is that sweeping through a number of remote communities we'll find people selling products and we're talking about photography services or first aid kits or water coolers. So they're products which you know some families want to buy and there's no problems with that. But we find that they are very expensive. They're not being paid for as as a cash up front deal. Um, they're actually being paid on uh, direct deductions out of bank accounts over a long period of time. And we'll find instances where families are paying a considerable amount of money, and we're talking a few thousand dollars, for a first aid kit. So we find then that uh, the consumers don't understand the contract. Um, they're often talked into these things. They believe they have an obligation to do it. You know, there's um, some scare tactics in the sales techniques. What we then find is that they're not being given all of their rights under the legislation in terms of a time to think about it, to cool off, change our mind, which we're all entitled to do when it's a door-to-door -door sale. So we need to make sure that these communities and the individuals know what their rights are. If they get into one of these transactions, that they'll come to the authorities like Consumer Protection and we can give them the advice on just how to deal with it and what to deal with it. a songwriter so I'm always um, going out and performing at the NAIDOC events and, um, and also I work at, um, at Music College, I'm a teacher there so we're always involved in all the community events happening around the place. I'm a student at, at Music and yeah, this is my lift, I'm my teacher so I just follow her around. <laughs> I'm a lecturer here uh, in, in the Indigenous Australian Cultural Studies, we, we teach mainstream and also we teach uh, our, own, uh, our own mob. Uh, we teach uh, teachers to be better culturally equipped, to be better teachers in all the three grades, three early childhood, primary, 
and then secondary and also we we teach cultural competency. I'm a coordinator of the block release programs here at the Centre for Aboriginal Studies. Um, the block release programs is available for students nationally, Indigenous students, and they come here in block release mode. Um, there's the Indigenous Community Health Program, the Indigenous Community Management and Development Program, and the Bachelor of Education Rural and Remote for teachers. You said block release, what, do, what does that mean? Students are able to travel from their communities in here into the centre to do two weeks of intensive study and four times a year and other blocks are seven times a year. Um, so we're actually taking probably the uh, making it more accessible. Uh, basically developing and researching material that can um, eventually be presented to the Aboriginal people, Aboriginal community, that teaches them about their rights as consumers. So basically I've, I'm in a really wonderful position where I can look at and understand where our people are actually being disadvantaged or, you know, that they may not even be aware of their rights and I can actually develop material that, that can be uh, educational to them. And I can also go out and talk to my, my community and, and uh, get them to engage with me and talk to me about their concerns. and give us a real insight about what, what they're, uh, they're dealing with as consumers. What's your role at the newspaper? I'm the managing director. Uh, I've been there since 2005. And uh, the newspaper is basically for, you know, the uh, MG people. But we're now opening up the newspaper. Instead of being a Jamaji newspaper, we're going to have it among the mail, which means a tree. And every uh, indigenous community can identify with the tree. And uh, it's for one guys you know, Noongar people and Yamajis and everybody else uh, is living in, in Western Australia is uh, identifying themselves as indigenous people. This paper is for them. So it is overdue because uh, we have working hard behind the scenes to bring this paper to a statewide level. So this month, 23rd of July, we're going to be producing as Malugu Mail. And this paper is for everybody in Western Australia. ATM fees, is that something that Consumer Protection is looking into as well? It's ridiculously high ATM fees in, in remote towns. We've come across instances where uh, communities are paying excessive fees, but that's usually in, re in relation to uh, particular traders who've operated in a way by holding cash cards and PIN numbers and the like. The promotion of getting an ATM into a community is a matter that comes up as a you know, a financial issue, usually between the uh, the bank and just how much work um, it, it can sell in terms of how many services can it, can it support. Uh, but we're finding that as a result of some of the investigations we've done into the misuse of cash cards, that by connecting with both the local government and by the uh, local community and then going to the financial institutions. We can start to build that relationship and they understand the need to get this sort of machinery into the community so that more people have got access to it rather than a cash point within a retail outlet. Um, so we can then have people accessing their own funds from these machines, uh, but it's got to obviously meet their costs. You've got to have people travelling out there to stock them with money. Uh, you know, these things have to, they don't magically just pump the money out. Someone's got to maintain them and look after them. So there are obviously some costs involved. And if you're in a very remote community, those travelling costs have to be built into it. Do you think um, Indigenous communities are in greater need of consumer protection? So I think so. Um, like Mr Hilliard spoke about today, you know, about people taking their car, um, IPTOS cards or their bank cards and keeping them for money. Um, uh, I used to live in the Kimberleys and I know that a lot of taxi drivers used to do that um, um, because people wanted alcohol in those days on those communities so they used to take their cards for that and I know that they had some shops on communities that they used to do that also. You know, so they used to hold those people's card and then when every fortnight those people had no money really to keep going. I like what our guest speaker said that we, we are being dealt the wrong deal. He spoke about our, uh, we've been shortchanged and by salesmen and, and with their pitch and so I think I'm really happy to hear that they're, they're looking, listening to our complaints and you, you got to, there are rights that we've, we've, they're making known to our community members. So I'm really happy about that, that, that there's penalties for, for, uh, for deceiving people. People who may not have the education or who are simple, who are trusting, 
and uh, there's penalties for that if you sh sell us short. If we come across traders which are selling these goods and services into the communities incorrectly, we can take action against those traders. We can, at the very least, educate those traders about what they're doing wrong, uh, but more importantly, take prosecution action if they've broken the laws. I think all too often it's been um, people telling Indigenous consumers what's best for them. We have to reverse that, turn that completely around. Uh, and talk to Indigenous consumers and say what are your problems, how can we best help and, and fit within that context. So it's a matter of, I think, um, engaging properly, uh, get, getting told what to do, uh, trying to find the best ways to, uh, to actually deal with those sorts of problems. Because every Indigenous community is different, there's no sort of one size fits all. So I think what, uh, what the people in Canberra and in Perth and the state capitals have to do is just try and engage properly, listen, uh, and then you know, take baby steps to try and uh, you know, solve some of those problems. Don't go away, Perth City Talks will be right back after this commercial break.